for Toronto Danforth. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je suis très contente d'être ici aujourd'hui et donner mon appui à cette étude sur le programme de suspension de casier qui a été commencé par um, mon collègue de, de St. John Rosset. Alors, je veux dire merci pour ça. Um, I was pleased to be able to second this motion in the House today. And as a member of the public, um, of the committee, the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security, I think it is important that we have someone who feels so strongly about this issue raising it and, and suggesting that this study come to the House, uh, comes to the committee as a priority. Because that is how we set our agenda, having people who see what's happening in their committees, seeing how it's touching individuals in their communities, and then bringing them forth so that we can make sure that it's a priority for us to look at uh, at our committee. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, as far as what the study will be looking at, as an idea of what it will be as breaking down, we will be looking at undertaking a study, if this is passed, on the record suspension program. We will be looking at examining the impact of a record suspension to help those with a criminal record to reintegrate into society. We will be examining the impact of criminal record suspension fees and additional costs associated with the application process on low-income applicants. We'll identify appropriate changes to fees and service standards for record suspensions and identify improvements to better support applicants for a criminal record suspension. Now, one of the things that I was wondering, because it's actually fairly new wording that we're talking about here today when we're talking about record suspensions. What are we talking about? Well, formerly this was known as pardons. And what a record suspension does is it allows people who were convicted of a criminal offense but have completed their sentence and demonstrated that they are law-abiding citizens uh, for a prescribed number of years to have their criminal record kept separate and apart. Uh, from other criminal records. And what it essentially does is it removes a person's criminal record from the Canadian Police Information Centre database, it's known as CPIC for short. And the reason that this can be important is it means that it will help people to access employment, it will help people to access education, and it helps people to reintegrate into society. That's important, in fact, because when John Howard Society was looking at this, and in fact, right, I'm looking at a study by ECOS that came out of a government consultation on this issue. And when we consulted, our government consulted with the public, the findings showed that participants in the consultation said that record suspension was a tool to help offenders move forward in their lives and in doing so, remain productive members of society free of criminal behavior. Now, if that is the goal, and that was seen by people who were responding to the consultation, then making sure that the record suspension program works has to be considered as far as allowing people to have access to housing, employment, education, and the like, so that they may reintegrate to society. Uh, so, one of the reasons that we're discussing it today, the reason why this is important, is because there were many changes that were brought under the former government. Uh, and in 2012, there were changes in 2010 and 2012, but the changes made some significant changes to the way that the record suspension program works. So, for example, the period of time that uh, people convicted of indictable offenses had to wait to be able to apply for a record suspension went from five to ten years. It was doubled. Um, and that's one part of it, is how long will people have to wait for it. But another important part, and particularly when we look back to part B of the motion, which is about examining the impact of the criminal record suspension fees and additional costs on low-income applicants, as has been mentioned by some others in the House today, the fee was quadrupled, quadrupled to $631. Simply made it unattainable for many people as it's a way of being able to get this record suspension. So I had mentioned, you know, why is it important? Why is it important that we address this issue? Why should we be looking at it? Well, in fact, 
there are reasons why we should be looking at it, and I am trying to find, if you give me one second, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I was looking at an article in paper, it was a Canadian press uh, article. It was kind of interesting because it brought to my attention an example that, that stood out as far as how uh, record suspensions can work. And one of the examples was a former Yukon Premier who had served from 2002 to 2011 and gave an interview about record suspensions. Uh, he said, if you're burdened with mistakes of the past on an ongoing basis, that in itself can contribute significantly towards further problems as you go through life. Uh, um, but he said, it becomes a real challenge for individuals. They're shunned. Certain doors aren't opened for them. What's interesting is this is a former a premier of the Yukon. He, in fact, in 1975 was convicted uh, of offenses. And so he spoke about that and said, uh, he said, in my case, I went from the penitentiary to the premier's office. Uh, and then he rose uh, to power as a leader of the conservative Yukon pa party and said, and the reason I got there was because I was able to achieve that full pardon and have a clean slate in my life. So someone who has experienced quite dramatic change in, in opportunities and what they were able to accomplish. Um, and as I mentioned, that's one of the reasons why we really need to be thinking about this. I, I wanted to highlight there's an organization in my community that does some great work with providing opportunities to people who do have criminal convictions, and people who are uh, exiting from the penitentiary system, and that's Clink Coffee. They are a social enterprise working through the John Howard uh, Society, and they provide employment opportunities specifically to individuals who are leaving um, the penitentiary system. And it's a chance for people to develop the job skills and to get the experience that they need. And they also sell some quite lovely coffee because I know we have it in our office and I, I think they make a good cup of coffee. But as a social enterprise, that is such an amazing thing. The thing is what we do know, Mr. Speaker, is that this isn't true for all employers. Not everyone um, is going to be comfortable with hiring someone who has uh, when they do the criminal record search, that it will come up. And so how do you make sure that people have these opportunities to reintegrate? And how do we, how do we make sure that we have a fair system going forward? So, the way I see this study is it's a chance for us to look at where do we go from here? We know that there were significant changes that were made under the prior government. We have seen some impacts. Uh, we have heard some statistics mentioned by my colleagues about the number of applications for records suspensions having been drastically reduced, dropped drastically in the past years. And we have found through our public consultations, I had mentioned before our public consultations, we have found that people in fact overwhelmingly supported shorter waiting periods. Now, overwhelmingly at the result of our public consultations, people suggested that the periods that we have right now are too long. Um, the other part that's been flagged for us, and I note the John Howard Society again, uh, is that the process is complicated and that in fact it creates a disincentive. It makes it too complicated for some people to ever be able to complete this process. So something else that we consider, it's specifically it's part D of this motion, it's reference to something we can consider. And so what I am looking forward to when I look forward to this study is it's a chance for us to look at all of these issues, get better information. <coughs> we can build on what was found through the public consultations, but that just gave us one piece. Now we can go and make those recommendations as to how we can make a stronger system going forward. It's a wonderful opportunity to give a people a second chance, and I am very happy to be supporting this motion today. Thank you. Resuming.